All right, guys, good evening. Happy Monday. We are here. This is um, our last Zoom of May because next weekend is going to be our next Monday is Memorial holiday. So um, we are not, we're not having a, a team Zoom next Monday. So this is our last one for this month. Um, so just connecting with you guys, talking through some things that uh, I've just noticed. So I'm going to go ahead and share screen with you, get into this. Um, some things that I've noticed uh, as a team that I feel like after tonight, this might give us a better handle on social media and how to essentially make a sale, right? But I don't want it to be... Um, I don't want you to think tonight is about sales driven and, and talking through that. You're going to notice that it's a big thread, uh, underlying thread that is social media and how we construct our social media and show up to it. So I'm really excited to get into that. But before we do that, just a couple announcements. I'll make this bigger in a second, but uh, for right now with the announcements, I'll keep it small. Today it was announced that Beachbody is launching in the UK in the fall of 2017. There was a video that I attached to that post this morning. Check the video out. It's about 20 minutes long and it goes through some of the do's and don'ts right now of what you can do versus what you cannot do. Um, so if you do know people in the United Kingdom, anywhere in the UK guys, so that, uh, my geography skills are going to be tested, but that's like England and we're talking about, uh, I believe Ireland is part of that too, right? Um, anyway, the UK. So, there are some do's and don'ts though. So if you know people there, you can start talking to them about that, but you cannot start like pre-signing people or things like that. So just check that out. There's also some language that uh, due to different governments and different laws abroad, uh, there's some language that you can't use. So in terms of Shakeology, that was a big one that I heard today on that video. You cannot call Shakeology a weight loss shake by law in the UK. And so if you are speaking to people there about Shakeology, you cannot call it a weight loss shake. So just, you know, there are some things to just be kind of abreast to just because it is a little different um, with a different country and how they handle business and product and things like that. So check that out. Um, again, no team call next week because it's Memorial weekend. Uh, so that Monday I will give that to you off. Um, and then just check out, though, that Sunday, we do have our sneak peek for the month of May. Next Sunday, it's going to be at 5 p.m. Pacific time to 6 p.m. Pacific time, so 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'm going to be getting onto the team page uh, probably tomorrow. I'll make the event page for it, and I'll also get on the team page and figure out what volunteers are going to help us with posting. Remember last time we had um, a lot of help uh, with, it was Amanda and Nicole and Leah, I believe that posted for us. And that was awesome. Um, this is a really great chance guys to help out and be a part of the team with zero pressure. I mean, you're literally just copying and pasting things. We're going to be using the same format from last week. Uh, okay. Summit. Um, some of you are going to summit. Some of you are probably some might still be on the fence with Summit. Some of you might just have joined this team and you don't know what Summit is just yet. Um, but Summit is coming up, guys, in just shy of two months. Um, most of us have already registered who have our tickets. We've registered already for the hall that we're going to be in slash um, workouts that we're going to be doing. So that's getting really exciting. But other things that are happening at Summit, I am getting there on Wednesday. And on Wednesday evening, I'm thinking about doing like pajama party, wine, pizza, and like game night, you know, like just fun stuff to get to know each other. Um, Thursday, Amanda and I are figuring out right now, on Thursday we are um, going to be doing a team bot -a So if you were part of the team back in December slash January, we did a bot -a for the new year, which is basically a two hour long beach body a -thon. And you pick, you know, enough workouts to get you through that. So we are, everyone who's going to Summit is picking their very favorite workout from uh, Beachbody On Demand. And we are mashing that up for a Summit uh, Inspire Beauty bot -a -thon. If you won't be at Summit, we're going to actively um, ask you to participate on that particular day with us and just bring traction to what it is we do as uh, a team together. And then um, all the learning and fun stuff happens on Thursday through Saturday. It's going to be awesome. Um, and that is also when Shift Shop is going to be launching the newest program that's coming out. Okay. So that's a little bit about Summit. Also, Nicole is working on a tank top design for us. We're going to um, see about getting that all set for us. So 
super pumped about that because uh, we're also going to have a summit tank and you don't have to go to summit to get the summit tank um yes love doing bodathon mary and you know what even if you're not at summit you'll be able to do the bodathon with us or even participate in parts of it whatever uh you can do that day so we're going to make sure that the team is everyone's aware of what we're doing and what workouts are happening um it's going to be super fun though and uh, like I said, the tank top guys, once we get all the ins and outs set with that, um, and how much it'll cost, we will set up a link and you guys can get to ordering that. Um, even if you're not at summit, you can still get the inspire beauty 2017 summit tank. Um, Sean week is coming up guys. Sean T is doing a Sean week. If you haven't heard about it, it's on Beachbody On Demand. Beachbody On Demand, uh, June 12th through 18th, is going to give a new Shanti workout each day, Monday through Sunday. So for seven days, there will be seven brand new Shanti, never before done workouts. Uh, they will not launch the workout until the following day. So on Monday, you're only going to be able to see Monday. And then on Tuesday, they'll put the next one up and so on and so on. So what I'm doing, and I've got it written down in my calendar. Let me just flip to it really quick, just so that I can kind of clue you guys in a little bit before I... Uh, before I send out the uh, June calendar, but 10 days from the launch of that, starting on June 2nd, which is a Friday, I'm personally going to be doing a 10 day Shanti countdown. Um, similar to what I posted on the team page, I posted a picture of a Shanti countdown. Um, I'm going to be doing something like that leading up to the launch. Um, my Sean week is going to be used in the free group. So if people in the free group want to do Sean week and they want to do those workouts, they're going to have to get the trial of beach body on demand. So that's also a way for me to segue conversations into people getting plugged into beach body on demand. The new trial of beach body on demand starting June 1st will only be a 14 day trial. Why is this? Because starting June 1st, all access is coming to all of Beachbody On Demand. So if you currently just have the regular Beachbody On Demand, you don't have the all access, uh, that everyone's gonna be upgraded come June 1st. And so the 30 day trial for free is no longer gonna be a 30 day free trial. It will only be 14 days. So those people for those seven days can do it for free. If they wanna cancel after the seven days, they are totally welcome to do that. Or after those seven days, we can start a conversation about how to upgrade challenge pack or whatever um, after that. So that's kind of what I'm doing for Sean week. And we'll continue having more conversations as we get closer to that. But I just want you to be aware, start getting your wheels turning because it is coming sooner than later, guys. Okay. Um, and the last thing is uh, shift shop. Like I said, it's launching in July. It will be launching at summit. So that's also something to keep on your radar. It's launching mid July. So what does that mean? Like in terms of challenge groups, right? So I'm always constantly thinking forward to how am I going to time out the position of my challenge groups, free groups, things like that. And the reason I'm putting this as part of the announcement is because I do want to talk to you guys first about challenge groups. Tonight's uh, why I'm, why I'm struggling to make sales isn't going to be relevant to you if you're not willing to run or co-run challenge groups, it really won't. And if, and I want you to take everything that I say guys with a grain of salt and I want your permission to be honest with you, but I also want to give you like a tip to have an open mind about whatever I say. Sometimes when I say things, and this is just me, this is my personality, and a lot of you have known me for a long time, some of you maybe not as long, but the reality is my personality is such that I just kind of say it how it is, and sometimes I can come across as tough love, sometimes it can come across like, um, you know, I want you to do X, Y, and Z only, and there's no room for budging on that. The reality is, guys, this is your business. And you all have your own unique goals and I have my unique goals and that's the coolest part about what we do. So everything I say to you tonight, I want you to figure out, you know, step back. Don't immediately put up a guard like, oh, that's, you know, I'm not trying that or she's not talking to me. I don't want you, I want you to release the guards, put your guards down. This is a safe place for this. And just have an open mind about how you, with your current goals and where you are in the business, could make this work for you. Right. Um, and so with challenge groups, I don't want you to say, well, I'm not running challenge groups, so I can't listen to this webinar tonight. Yeah, you can, because that doesn't mean because today you're not running them that you can't in the future. And it also doesn't mean that you can't co run them or implement this with your free groups or just implement this so that maybe one day you will be running challenge groups like a freaking rock star. So I want you to know that all of this stuff trickles down to you needing to have a plan about challenge groups as we get closer to June. 
we have what, like a week and a half until June. June is next Thursday. So we have a week and a half, guys. Are you starting to think about what you're doing in June? Because right now, I am. My, I have a, a weekly focus every week, and my weekly focus right now is June. That is my weekly focus. Right now is June because I've got to start thinking ahead so that I can make a plan for that. And you're going to make, this is going to all make sense as we go through it. So I'm going to um, put this into presentation mode so that we can see it a little bit bigger. Okay, so the, there are going to be five things that I go into depth with tonight in terms of why you may be struggling to make sales, okay? I've been there. I have been in places, when I first started this business, you guys, I started in October. I did not run my first challenge group until December. And when I ran that group in December, it was a free group, no purchase necessary, okay? And then when I ran my group in January, I had a couple people join, but it was mixed with some people bought challenge packs and some people didn't. And then in February, I co-ran a group with my upline coach, Emily, and we ran one together. And then by March, I was falling off. I couldn't find people. I was having such a hard time finding anyone that wanted to join my groups. And I struggled all the way March, April, May, June, July, August. I remember struggling really hard, like really trying to scrounge for people. My groups were really silent. Uh, I just didn't, it just didn't feel like anybody wanted to do what I wanted, what I was trying to do, right? I had this like dream and this vision and then nobody cared. And that's how it felt. And um, I didn't start with a huge following on social media. I didn't have an Instagram account when I first signed up. I only had Facebook. Run to your happy place did not exist at this point. And I didn't make a single paycheck. I made my first paycheck uh, in mid-November. So I did the business for about six weeks before I got any sort of paycheck. And that was a $30 paycheck because somebody bought Shakeology. And then I don't think I got paid again until January. So the whole month of December. So I Six weeks into the business, I got $30, and then another six weeks went by with nothing, and then finally when New Year's hit, I got some traction, and then it was fluctuating. So it was frustrating. I get it, guys. But when the fall came around, fall was a really big point for my business because I didn't, I had, even though it was difficult and I was struggling, these things that I'm going to talk to you tonight about, I was really implementing. I was trying really hard to turn my followers into customers through my social media. And so by the time the fall came, it was like I had a little bit of credibility because I had shown up for so long that a lot of people were like, well, you know what, I'm finally ready. And by the time the fall came, I started really having success in my groups. So let's do this, let's do some math real quick. I signed up in the fall, and it wasn't until the following fall, a year later, that I finally started having success. Guys, I signed up in October. I don't think I had my first coach join me until February. So that was about five months of the business that I couldn't get anybody. I didn't know how to ask people to join my team. I didn't know who to talk to. And I, I didn't get anybody to join until five months later. I started really slow. And so if you're sitting here thinking like, it's just such a slow start, I should just quit. I want to encourage you not to. Because my start was very, very slow. And I kept going and kept going because I believed wholeheartedly that I could do this and that I wanted people to see that I wasn't just a flake, that I wasn't just doing this for a little bit. And then I'd just be like one of those people that had signed up for something, bugged people for a little bit and then gave up on it. Right. I wanted it to be more than that. And it is more than that. We on Inspire Beauty are so much more than that. So the five things that we're going to talk about tonight, we're going to talk about bringing them into your story. We're then going to talk about making a clear call to action. We'll talk about how you connect, practicing what you preach, and stopping people in their scroll, okay? So those are the five topics we're gonna address right now with how your social media is going to help you turn those followers into customers. So the first thing is bringing them into your story. The reality is you've gotta ask yourself, are you telling your story? People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. If they don't know you, they don't know whether they like you or not. I mean, flat out. If you don't know somebody, you can't decide if you like them or not. Like when you walk past a stranger on the street, you can give them the benefit of the doubt. Like, yeah, I bet I would like that person. They look cool. But you don't know them. So maybe when they open their mouth and they say something, you realize now you have a choice. Do I like them or do I not like them? Then once we decide that we like somebody, 
we have to then start building a relationship and learn how to trust them. Just because you like somebody doesn't mean that you've given them all of your trust yet, right? And so that is the progression of business. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust. So are you telling your story? Because the only way for somebody to know you guys is to know you through your story. Surface level is not enough. Okay, and I'm gonna talk about what surface level means. Surface level means uh, I did my workout today and I posted a sweaty selfie and I told them that I did my workout. That's surface level. Okay, cool. I drank my shake today and I posted that I had a chocolate banana shake and I posted me holding my Shakeology. Surface level. I don't know you. Uh, I did my personal development and I just took a, I took a shot of my book that I'm reading and I just, I said, I'm really loving failing forward. It's really helping my mind. Surface level. Don't know you. I don't know you if you just give me surface level. And that is okay, guys, in the beginning of your business to Start getting comfortable telling people that you're working out, telling people that you're drinking a shake, showing people what you're having for dinner, and telling them that you're starting to better your mind. And that is so important, is getting comfortable sharing that. But as you start getting comfortable with sharing that, you've got to start connecting with people. People will not connect with you if you don't start telling your stories. So guys, what do you struggle with? What are things that you struggle with? What keeps you up at night? You've got to embrace the good part of you and the bad part of you because together that's you. Nobody wants some image of perfection on social media. That's why I love Beachbody because when I go to the gym, I often feel intimidated by the images of perfect women and perfect men and their perfect gym rituals and they just look fake to me. And so I don't gel with those people. I don't understand them and they don't understand me because I just see an image of perfection that I can never attain. What I love about Beachbody is I don't have to be perfect in order to run a challenge group. I don't have to be perfect in order to have a team of coaches. I just embrace the good parts of me. I work on the bad parts of me and I share it all along the way. I don't hide anything in the closet from people um, that I think someone could benefit from learning about. So for me, one of the big things was when about a year ago I started struggling with depression I had to start talking about that, you guys. And at first it was really scary because I couldn't talk about it because I was still kind of in it, right? But the more that I could take it and say, today I did yoga because of my depression, right? And the more I could say, I'm drinking this shake, not because I'm trying to lose weight, but because it has certain vitamins in it that help my chemical balance be proper in my mind and it helps to holistically combat depression. And when I start talking about it in that way, all of a sudden women and men come out of the woodwork that are like, wow, I didn't know that you struggle with that. I struggle with that too. And all of a sudden they're starting to know me. Now we can start deciding if we like each other and build trust. Okay. Guys, they're not buying a product. They're not. They could go to beachbody.com and buy the same product. Um, they could go to any other coach and buy the same product. It's not about them buying a product. It's about them buying you. They're investing in you as their coach. And so they need to be able to know, like, and trust you. Um, when you are planning groups too, guys, your groups could be part of your story. You know, like maybe you struggle. When I did the Rise and Shine Challenge, uh, the free group, a couple uh, last month, I did that on purpose because rise and shine. It was a, it was a group to promote like healthy mindset. And that's something I struggle with and something I work on. And so I brought it into a free group. So when you're planning free groups, make it part of your struggle, right? Because there's other people out there that are struggling with those things too. And by you allowing yourself to be vulnerable and show up to your struggles, um, these people are going to feel like, you know, if she can do it, I can do it too. The other thing to remember though, guys, is that you're not just putting out your struggle. Like you're not just saying, oh, today sucked because I hate my job or, oh, I, you know, my body hurts so bad. I can't do any workout. Like it's not about complaining or airing dirty laundry on social media. You should always have a solution to the problem, which is why I say in the beginning, I couldn't talk about my depression because I didn't have a solution. But once I started to realize, okay, this is working or this is helping or this is good, then I could start bringing that into my story, right? And so think about that in your life. What are some things that maybe you used to struggle with that you don't anymore? Share that in a form of a story, okay? 
The next is a clear call to action. First of all, what is your plan? When you go to post on social media, do you have any sort of plan about how you're posting? And I don't mean that you need to have a plan for every single post that you make. That's not what I'm saying. Because I certainly don't. I like to say I post uh, in an organic fashion, meaning that as my day unfolds, so does my social media. But I have a plan. Guys, Sunday is our coach sneak peek. What do you think all, I'm going to be threading all week long? Coach sneak peek. Last week, I was prepping for this free sugar reset. What do you think was the underlying thread throughout all my posts? Sugar, let's reset. Now, it wasn't like blah, 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 like that's all I'm talking about all week long, and it becomes white noise, and people stop following me. It's that I thread it throughout my message. I was talking to Jessica the other day and she's doing a water challenge right now. And uh, she was telling me how she was really proud of herself because she hadn't had a Coke all week. And then she finally had one at lunch, but that's it. She just had one and she was really proud. And I said, girl, that's your story. You got to share that. Like, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be like a, an advertisement for your group every time you go to do it. You can share a story, a little nugget. I bet there's other people out there that struggle drinking too much pop or soda or whatever you call it, right? I call it pop. Um, there, there might be other people out there that struggle with that. And then when they see that you struggle with it, but this is what you're doing about it, now all of a sudden, they feel like they can count on you and rely on you for help. So your posts have to have some sort of plan to it right? You can't just be throwing darts hoping something sticks uh, because you're just going to be throwing darts hoping something sticks. One post per day, guys, as you're prepping for a group or prepping for a sneak peek or prepping for whatever it is that's coming up the following week, one post per day should have a distinct call to action. Guys, people don't know what you want them to do until you tell them what it is they want you want them to do. So if you want them to comment, then you need to get them to comment. If you want them to like this, then you need to get them to like it. Sometimes it's as simple as asking, right? A lot of times, like on my posts, I'll say, hey, show some love and comment below with, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I do that on purpose because I want them to comment so it gets more engagement, so people are more engaged and interactive with what I'm doing. Sometimes my call to action is to, um, you know, go to my blog and fill out an application. Sometimes I put the application in the comments. But one post per day should be a call to action. So as we're prepping for the sneak peek, and you're talking about, today I talked about busy, because I hear that from people a lot about being a busy coach. And so my whole post was talking about busy and how I used to be very busy and that this opportunity changed that for me because I got to learn how to undo that poor behavior and undo that glorification. And so my call, I, I had a call to action today for people because I'm prepping for the sneak peek. So whatever you're prepping for, you want your call to action to reflect that. Also, don't just do a call to action on one day. Like on Monday, I did my call to action. You should probably do it all every single day leading up to it. Play around with the timing, okay? On a Sunday night, that's a great time when people are not wanting to go back to work on Monday, they're really sick of their jobs, and it's Sunday night, and they're bummed out. That's a great time to talk about the freedom of Beachbody or what, you know, this, especially if your plan and your path is to do this full time or to try to exit away from your job eventually, if that's one of your heart cries, that's something great to talk about on a Sunday night. And then, Timing with like, uh, I think about, you know, Monday morning, people don't want to get to work. Tuesday nights are a really great time when people are on their, um, on their phones. Usually people aren't on their phones scrolling social media on Friday night, Saturday, because they have lives and they're doing things that they're not trying to escape from, right? And so you have to think of the timing of things. Don't just post 7 a.m. every single day, call to action, call to action, call to action. It's going to be white noise. Vary it with the timing, okay? Now, not right now, but when we get off of this, I encourage you to look at your Facebook page and do an audit, okay? I'm gonna um, exit here really quick and we're gonna do a real and raw audit of mine. How about that? Can you guys see it? Cool, Facebook, you can see Facebook right now? Okay, so when we're auditing, we wanna look at first your cover photo. Does your cover photo encapsulate who you are? Now, Mike, I always say four to five things that your brand is, right? So with Brittany, obviously health and fitness is a big one. Um, you know, 
my family, Charlie, Frankie, that kind of thing is a big one. Health and happiness, positive living, that's a big one. Um, and so this is my cover photo and it, it encapsulates the majority of my brand. Now, could it be better as I look at it? Yeah, it could be better. I could put Frankie on here somewhere. I think people would love that. People love Frankie, so they love him more than me. So I could put him on here. Um, I could maybe put something with Inspire Beauty on here. Like maybe after Summit, I could add a picture from Summit of our team on here. That would be really cool. Um, and just encapsulating that. Then you wanna look at, so when you look at your own cover photo, is it showing your overall brand? Is it showing a little bit about you? Um, so that when somebody goes to your page, all of a sudden you've built instant credibility because they're like, oh, well, she must work out. I see sports bra and shoes here, and wow, only you can make it happen. Okay, so, oh, look at the transformation. Okay, she's, you know, vacation. Here she is smiling, like whatever, right? And so this is a view that people are getting of Brittany. Now, the other thing you wanna look at is your profile pic. Now, I love this profile pic, I can't lie, I'm very, I'm like, my ego is so big right now with it, but if you notice, this is so old. Like, I, this is, like, shame on you, Brittany, why do you still have My Time to Shine? The My Time to Shine challenge, I think, was in April, March, maybe? This is old. So, I, at, for the summer group, I need to update this profile picture and, and pick something new because it's time. So I'm doing an audit, an honest audit. This is not perfect, guys. There's room for growth. The reality is, though, um, when all of this was made, it was in in my in my in that moment, it was perfect for me. I was satisfied. But now, a couple months later, things have evolved in my life. I should probably go back and check it out and audit it, right? So I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Um, and then. Scroll, uh, hold on, no, I wanna stay on this. And then with like scroll stop, stopping stuff, you wanna go, go down and see like what is scroll stopping? What stops you in your tracks um, when, you're, when you're scrolling? And be honest about it, right? And then look at things that got likes. This has no comments. Okay, well that, there wasn't a lot of engagement. That's not good. I want more comments and likes. Okay, so that's, you just gotta do a little bit of an audit sometimes on your own social media and see with an open mind, guys, see with an open mind if people can really tell who you are based on your Facebook page, okay? Um, and if, if they can, awesome. But if they can't, again, keep an open mind and say, okay, I need to get better at this, right? I need to do, a, I need to make a new cover photo. I should update my profile pic. If your profile pic, guys, is like a picture of your cat, um, the, no offense, but like I, when I go to friend request somebody and it's the picture of their cat, I'm not gonna friend request them because I don't know what they look like. I don't know who they are. I don't know if they're male or female sometimes based on their name and the spelling. Like it needs to be you, clearly it needs to be you. Now it could be you and your boyfriend, you and hubby or whatever, but it should clearly show that you're in there, right? Um, hold on. There we go. Okay, next, moving on. So practice what you preach, okay? Um, oh, wait, I think it skipped over one. Yeah, it did. Okay, here we are. Connect, sorry. <coughs> so somebody's interested in you guys, right? Like they commented on something or they personal messaged you or whatever. Um, and, and you know that they're interested in potentially either joining a free group or joining your challenge group. Maybe they'd make an awesome coach. So now what do you do? Well, it's easy, really easy to get excited and word vomit because trust me, I have been there uh, and totally done that. Um, and now what I've found, guys, is that the slower you go and the more intimate you get, the more you make it about them, the more likely they are to, if not now, purchase something from you or join whatever it is you're asking them to join, they will come back to you because it wasn't about a quick sale. So it's really easy when somebody's interested to be like, oh, bam, here's my uh, link. Just sign up and we're starting the group on Monday. I'm so excited. And the reality is that's just a quick sale. Ask them questions, guys. Um, don't just drop a link. Okay. So ask questions, ask them what their goals are. I have a, a template that I like to do so that I can just 
send it to them and I make it through Google Docs um, and I just make a little questionnaire. And so my questionnaire just asks them different questions about their goals, what's worked in the past, what's their favorite type of workout they like to do, what are they most excited for, why do they want to have, you know, why do they want to reach this goal, um, you know, what's worked, what hasn't worked in the past, all that good stuff. And so I like, you know, what is their diet like now? Just asking questions so that I can get to know. If their diet's really great, um, and then they're drinking Herbalife too, it's gonna be a clear signal for me to be like, well, you know, really sorry, but we have to, we drink Shakeology in these groups, this group might not be for you, and that's okay, right? Um, but it's important to know these things, right? It's also important to make it personal, tailor, make the conversation to that person and relate to them. I'm certain that all of you on some level can relate to what people say, um, or at least relate with compassion. When people say, oh man, Brittany, like I just, you know, I just never have any time to work out. I just, I mean, I get home and I'm so tired. I just want to sit on the couch and watch TV. And like the last thing I want to do is work out. And I'll be like, dude, I get you. I so understand that. Do you know that when I used to get home, I would have to bargain with myself that if I did my workout, I could have a glass of wine and like, we'll laugh. And it's like, but that's true. And I'm connecting with them. I'm making it personal. I'm saying, listen, I share the same struggles you have. And this is what I've done to get better. And so sharing that you're human and that you've made those same errors and that you understand what they're going through, it's all of, it makes it so much more personal, right? And again, avoiding um, the word vomit, right? Because it's, it, it's really easy when you get excited. And by all means, it's so exciting when somebody finally wants to join you. <laughs> Absolutely. I still get like tickled freaking pink every time. But the reality is you have to like hone it in on this end of the screen and be like, I, what I used to practice, guys, I, I poop you not right now, as I used to start typing like, oh my God, that's so awesome. So we start on Monday. Duh, duh, duh. And then I'd stop. And I delete, I delete the whole thing. And then I, okay. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. So what's your biggest goal right now? And I'd ask them a question. If you respond to somebody who's interested without asking them a question, read it back to yourself, breathe, hit delete, delete it all, and find a question to ask them to let them know that you really care about their journey, not just about the sale. My favorite part of this business is that our job does not start when we make a sale. Our job starts when we make, no, how am I, I'm saying that so wrong. Our job doesn't end when we make a sale. That's when our job begins. And so you want to know that when you get to that point with them, that they've finally, you know, checked out and they've got what they're, what they purchased, that now is when your relationship really does begin. Okay. Your services, you guys, are so worth it. So I used to count my chickens before they hatched. Like I'd be like, oh yeah, this girl's totally gonna be in the challenge group. And then I'd stop inviting people because I had this one girl that was interested two months ago. And I kept asking the same girl over and over and over again. And you know, every time she'd give me the runaround until I realized, like, why do I keep circling back to <coughs> excuse me, to people who aren't actually going to ever do this? Maybe one day they will, but in the meantime, it's just bumming me out, quite frankly. So I got to move on. If somebody says, if I send an email to somebody with information about my challenge group, I do not count them in my challenge group until in the back office, it shows that they've purchased it. If I send the email, all I can count on is that I've got to follow up with them. And, I, and then I send the email and I move on and I ask somebody else. And I send the email and I move on and I ask somebody else because my services, guys, that I offer as a Beachbody coach, my challenge groups, my free groups, my team, everything that we have, it's so worth it. And I believe that wholeheartedly. So I plant seeds daily. Okay. Don't stop planting seeds just because one person said, yeah, I want more information. That doesn't mean you stop asking people. Keep planting seeds because even that person that ends up maybe not purchasing it and not being interested or whatever for now, they're going to come back to you guys. They're going to come back to you. I've had people, uh, I've got a challenger right now that two years ago, two years ago when I flew out to uh, San Jose to visit Charlie on my spring break. We were taking engagement photos two years ago. And two years ago, I had a phone call in the car while we were on our way to go take engagement photos. And I had a phone call with a, with a woman and she was going to sign up as a coach and she was going to join my challenge group and everything. And then she didn't sign up. She didn't join anything. Silent, dead. Two years later, she signed up. She's not a coach yet. 
She will be. I know she will. She's awesome. She joined the challenge group. Two years. Guys, I waited two years for her and it was so worth it. It was so worth it. And she waited two years for me, right? Till she was ready. Plant seeds daily. And you might be sitting here like, Brittany, I cannot wait two years for one person. Well, that's why you continue to plant seeds over and over. And you practice, guys. The more you practice connecting and talking to people and asking questions and making it personal, the better you get at it, right? So the more you practice, the better you're going to get at this craft. So just keep practicing it over and over again. You're going to fail. You're going to say some, you're going to say the wrong thing to somebody. You're going to totally word vomit one of these days. You're going to think you have somebody and then to join your group and then they flake on you. You just keep practicing. You just keep practicing. Okay. Uh, speaking of practicing, you've got to practice what you preach. So are you practicing what you preach? This whole beach body thing? Are you following a workout calendar from start to finish as best as you can and documenting that journey on social media for people? Remember though, not just documenting it in a surface level way, you gotta get deep and start sharing the journey, the ups, the downs, the trials, the tribulations, the successes, the highs and the lows. Are you drinking your Shakeology daily? You don't have to post about your Shakeology daily and, and you know, spam people all over social media with shakes, but get, get um, you know, creative about how you talk about your daily Shakeology and what it's doing for you. And are you following a meal plan of some sort? You know, I don't follow a Beachbody meal plan. I have something that works really well for me and it's, it's something that I've worked on doing for a long time. And so I, but I share my meal plan and what I'm doing every week with my followers. It's a table I made on Word document guys and I just type into it and then I take a screenshot of it and I upload it like, and I share people with people what I'm doing this week to eat and, and stay on track. So maybe if you struggle with eating well, maybe that's something you want to start doing is use that practice what you preach, right? This only just makes you more credible, more trustworthy, a better you, right? When you're practicing what you preach, obviously you're becoming a better version of yourself. You become a role model for people and you become relatable because people can now relate to your journey because they're watching it unfold, okay? And the last one, guys, is stop the scroll. I want you to be able to stop the scroll for people. Everybody gets on their phone and they're just scrolling social media until they find that one thing that makes them want to stop, whether it's like a funny cat video or a meme that's just awesome and hilarious or something sad happened in someone's life and, and I have to stop and acknowledge it and send my, my love and my prayers to that person. Whatever it is, the scroll's got to be stop worthy. So you've got to do another audit. What posts on your page that you've made recently stop you and why do they stop you and be honest with it. Like do a serious gut check and you can be like, yeah, that one stops me. I love that one. And that one stops me. I love that one.